Hello, welcome to the Art Channel. It's Grace Adam and Joshua White, and this week we're going to be reviewing a show called the Institute of Sexology, which is at the Welcome Collection uh, in London, and it runs till November 2015. Uh, the Institute is uh, an exhibition all about sex, all about our changing attitudes to sex, and it really goes a long way, I think, to continuing to contest our ideas of normality. So there is art, artefacts, film, erotica, and a mixture of scientific um, interrogations and artistic interrogations. Um, when you come into the exhibition, you see a very beautiful, very small collage by a contemporary British artist called John Stasica, called Fall 15. He makes rather disturbing, in some ways, old-fashioned collages. And this one is made from found images from 19th century anatomy books. And it splices together two bodies and is part of a body of work around ideas of um, fractured identities or the fact that our identities, sexual and otherwise, are quite complex. Mm. Um, one half of the body is male mm. and the other is female. And so you have this kind of synthesis uh, duality um, that interestingly uh, Alfred Kinsley picks up on mm. later in the exhibition with his chart, his spectrum of sexuality, moving from heterosexuality to homosexuality. And it's this idea really that the body uh, or sexuality is mutable, it's mm -hmm. never fixed, it's flowing. And John Stezaka, using his collage technique, is through that sort of simple intervention, splicing mm -hmm. the two photos, suggesting complexity, mm -hmm. really. I think it's a very successful piece because it's not complex. Mm. but it gives you uh, complex ideas and thoughts. You respond to it um, in a quite sophisticated way. So I think it's a very successful, straightforward piece of art making. And so throughout the show there are artworks um, from contemporary uh, artists uh, working in a range of different media. And the next uh, piece you encounter along the wall is a series of photographs which are part of a project by Zanelli Moholy, who's a South African photographer. And she's made it her role to photograph and document um, through portraiture um, many uh, lesbians, South African uh, lesbians, who have been uh, to some extent uh, persecuted or endangered uh, by their sexuality and are living in quite fraught circumstances. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, uh, the identification, some of them are actually refugees and living in places like Amsterdam, really fleeing for their lives mm. because their sexuality poses such a, a dire risk uh, to their welfare. And it's a, it's a piece of work, you, you come up to the wall, you are faced, you are confronted with um, very strong images of real individuals looking mm. out at you. Um, the images are arranged in a grid pattern and there are gaps in the grid where there are missing mm. photographs of people who have died of disease or have been killed as a result of their, of their sexuality. So it's a, it's a very striking statement, I think. And also those portraits are so kind of powerful. Mm -hmm. There's a, a dignity, an individuality to them, but also an, a subtext of suffering, mm -hmm. of really being bruised and uh, endangered um, by their sort of honesty, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know it's a it's a really powerful and fitting piece for that particular exhibition. Yeah, it works very well. Um, moving on, we come to a piece of work by Carol Schneeman called uh, Yoldi Sex Chart, or the Parameters of Sex, I think. Um, Schneeman is a, a performance artist, or uh, works across video and also painting. And this, when you first look at it, you think, Ah, I'm looking at science. I'm looking at something serious. This is a chart. Yeah. Um, it's actually a chart of her sexual partners between 1969 and 1971. Mm -hmm. And it looks like an old-fashioned accounting book in a way. And you are confronted with Schneeman's opinions about whether she had good lovers, how they measured up anatomically, how much sleeping she did with them when she actually slept with them. And it's an extension of um, a lot of work she's done earlier about, uh, about feminism and about the body and about her life. And really she's inverting that traditional way in which men and the male gaze have cast a judgement over the female body and uh, female allure. Mm. Um, she's taking back that kind of power as a sort of feminist artist. 
Um, but it's very much like a, just a sort of witty diary, a sort of stream yeah. of comments about these men who may or may not fall short of her kind of expectation. Mm. It's rather wry and it's rather revealing and, it's, and it pokes fun at science, I think, or scientific ways of recording. So it's, a, it's quite a, a clever piece of work, I think. And then we come to a film piece called Recherche 3 by Sharon Hayes who has made a film set in a, uh, a female college, a single sex uh, college in the northeast of the United States. And really, it's a kind of free-flowing uh, film that explores um, contemporary sexual mores, habits, and a sense of sexual identity amongst this uh, mm -hmm. female, uh, a group of female uh, students. And they're very frank on camera, and they sort of debate the issues amongst themselves. Um, it felt quite unstructured, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I think she she managed to pull that off because mm. uh, I think I might be saying that she had worked with these students. She'd been a visiting tutor for a number of years, mm. so she there was a, a big element of trust. And this group of, as you say, thirty-five young women, uh, I think, filmed outside on the campus, yes. were, were very frank, and um, people talked over each other. It was all very natural. Sure. Um, and it draws attention to the fact that, as you say, it's an all-female college, so in some ways it was a very old-fashioned institute, and in other ways they talk very frankly and very openly about their sexual lives, so um, it, was, uh, it was really very revealing. Uh, two moments stand out when uh, Sharon Hayes is speaking to a transgendered student that is undergoing a gender reassignment from uh, female to male, and you really appreciated all of the kind of dilemmas and struggle and uh, a kind of debate about the status of gender mm. itself. You know, here's a, a woman becoming a man in an mm. all-women uh, uh, college. Mm. And there was another moment whereby she asked one of the students about their mother's experience of sexuality. And it was quite awkward mm. because, of course, how much of that student disclosed mm about her mother's sex life and also begs the question how much does she actually know? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, 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 it goes in with the show very well, this idea that sexuality changes, um, our attitudes change, and it's still awkward and it's still interesting. Um, and people are prepared to reveal so much but not everything. So it was a, it was a good piece of work, I think. Mm. Uh, moving on, we uh, reached a piece of work by uh, Timothy Archibald. And this is a um, part of a, a, a huge project to, um, I think he wanted to invite people, he's very interested in people inventing things, he's an American artist and he wanted to document home inventors and home mm. inventions. And that was the initial premise for the piece of work. It turned out that he tapped into, I think inadvertently, a subculture of people inventing sex machines mm. at home. Bizarre, Heath Robinson, mm. uh, dangerous looking sex machines and <laughs> sex aids in some cases. So. He was interested, I think, in what they were inventing, this kind of club, yes. they put their work up on his site, but also he talks about getting into people's homes all across America and looking at their lives. It kind of meets that expectation of a kind of American entrepreneurial mm. spirit. Mm. How can these inventors address the needs of human sexuality yes. in a way that's kind of frank and practical mm and um, improves the quality mm. of life. But at the same time, it has that slightly disturbing quality. Mm. There's something slightly smutty about it. Yeah. It, almost like we're being given a privileged access to something we shouldn't see. Yes, and I think he was lucky because he tapped into this, this club and people were happy to share, but otherwise it would have been invisible and these images and ideas would just have been exchanged amongst this group of people. So you do feel slightly voyeuristic, you do feel like you're seeing something you shouldn't, um, just that fun. And it picks up on the wider theme mm. of the exhibition, which is about the progress in understanding human sexuality mm -hmm. through disclosure, mm -hmm. isn't it, and sharing. Yeah. And it's a show, an exhibition that looks at pioneers of um, investigation into sexuality, um, Sigmund Freud, Marie Stopes, Alfred Kinsey, mm -hmm. people who've really improved the quality of mm -hmm. life um, for, for millions of people, mm -hmm. have taken away stigma and shame, mm -hmm 
and confusion and ignorance surrounding human sexuality. And so these art pieces we've been discussing um, explore those kind of dilemmas and, and um, problems and challenges um, that remain very much kind of the heart of human experience today. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a good exhibition in that it doesn't really give us any answers. It gives us many opportunities and many questions and many options. And that, I think, is, is, is quite exciting. I'm quite nervous when I go to an exhibition that has science and art yes. as a kind of subtitle. Sometimes art is, is asked to explain science mm. in a quite inadequate way. But I think here, there weren't that many contemporary art pieces, but I think they held their own and were just as rigorous an investigation as, as the science. And the Wellcome Foundation or collection has done that very well, because primarily it's a collection of objects relating to human biology and medicine, but they have deliberately commissioned contemporary art and included art in uh, these sensibly scientific exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And there's that nice duality between the imagination in art, creativity, and on the one hand, and facts and a recording on the other in mm -hmm. a kind of scientific mm -hmm. element. And there was one object in the exhibition that kind of married those two uh, streams together, which is the Wilhelm Reich organ box, this extraordinarily bizarre um, object. That, it looks like a sculpture. It's almost an interactive, um, immersive object that you sit in. And it's a piece of, it's like a wooden enclosed chair covered in a metallic uh, skin. And it's not clear at all <laughs> in the exhibition, and perhaps this is a failure, quite how this object functions, what's meant to happen, what, what is the experience you have. And neither of us actually sat in it, no, to be fair. <laughs> but I think it sort of sits at the junction between art on the one hand and science on the other, a, a kind of fantasy that attempts to take human knowledge further mm. forward. Mm. I think I'd slightly take issue with you over the fact that um, we are meant to be confronted by facts and by art. I mean, the science is always biased, the science mm. is always a product of its age, of its mores, mm. of its prejudice. Um, and so I think things that seem scientific and acceptable, you know, Kinsey, for example, when we look back, we realise that this couldn't have happened at any other time in any other place. So I think that was quite fascinating. And finally, of course, sexuality sits. Uh, between the human psyche and the mind and uh, the body mm -hmm. and it's this kind of indeterminate space uh, between uh, two different kinds of experience which of course opens up the subject for a kind of rich yeah. inquiry by artists yeah. really, this sort of fluidity mm -hmm. this mutability I was speaking about earlier mm -hmm. so to conclude um, it's a really exciting, interesting, challenging show, um, part of a, a series of shows mounted by the Welcome uh, Collection that bring together um, historic and scientific artefacts mm. um, with uh, artworks. Um, and it runs, as we were saying, until November, so do try and see it. Thank you. Thanks very much.